I know you've been hunting for party hacks. I'm Chef Yankel, and this is my favorite one. It's ButcherBox Meatloaf Blend, which is a mix of beef, pork, and some other delicious natural flavors. And I've paired it with a maple brown sugar glaze, but I've also wrapped it in bacon. Want to see how? Let's do it. One of my favorite party appetizers and suddenly all of the work that I had to do in the past, seasoning and mixing the ground meats and adding flavor and binder and all of that done for me by ButcherBox. So I'm thrilled about that. So I'm gonna use the time to actually show you a quick glaze instead. So what I'm gonna do first is just get these in the oven. So I'm going with the larger end of a piece of bacon, saving the other end for anything else that I feel like using bacon for. I'm just gonna lay it down. I'm gonna take a little ball and I'm thinking bite size or maybe one and a half bites size wise. It will shrink a little bit. Of course, some of the fat and some of the water that's always in protein is going to leave when you cook it. So take that into account. And all we do now is simply roll. And I'm using a mini cupcake tin. I have experimented with putting it meaty side up or fat side up. And I found fat side up tends to render better and give me a nice, tight, compact little cocktail bite. So I'm doing it that way. And we'll finish these off. Just a little ball, roll it up. Very simple. By the way, you can also just make mini meatloaf bites right out of the cupcake tin. Don't have to wrap them in bacon. Pretty easy. Put a little sauce on top of that and you've got a perfectly fine afternoon snack. These cook in no time at all too. And the best thing is you can cook them in advance. And then when you're ready to party, pop them in the oven with a little bit of your glaze for about 10 minutes and they're ready to go. Now that that's done, we're gonna go into the oven and we'll glaze them about halfway through uh, because that's the ideal time. Otherwise the glaze can burn. So I'm gonna get these in the oven and show you the glaze. All right, for our glaze, really simple, and you can absolutely substitute different ingredients flavor-wise. The baseline here is going to be maple syrup and brown sugar. I've got a preheated pan because eh, it just makes things go faster. And I'm going almost simple syrup style, a little bit less, so like, let's call it one part to two third parts, maple syrup to sugar. One part maple syrup, two thirds of that is going to be brown sugar. Once I've got those two sugary elements in the pan, I wanna make sure I keep an eye on it. It'll start to bubble and we wanna reduce it a little bit into a syrup, but once you go too far, it turns into candy and then it burns really fast. And then it's very hard to clean. We're going with just a pinch of chili powder. Sometimes I'll substitute something smoky, like a chipotle powder, perhaps something with a little bit more heat, like cayenne, or maybe go with an entirely different flavor profile depending on what I'm putting the glaze on. And then just a splash of apple cider vinegar. And again, substitute a different vinegar or something with some acidity, an orange juice, really any kind of zest, citrus is going to add a tremendous amount of flavor and balance, which is what we're going for. We're gonna simmer that and it's gonna take roughly 10 to 15 minutes to get to the consistency we want. So just uh, once it comes to a simmer, keep an eye on it, turn the heat down low, stir it often, and you'll see as soon as it starts to coat the spoon, it is ready to go. And uh, by that time, our little bites are gonna be ready to get brushed with our glaze. All right, it's time to check on our sauce, our glaze. It looks delicious. It smells really good. And it is like the perfect consistency. It's basically like warm honey. That's what I'm looking for. It should coat the spoon, but still leave some residue. It's perfect. Just a little bit of spice from the chili powder, but nothing overwhelming. Nothing anyone who doesn't like spice would mind. It really just basically wakes your palate up and says, I'm flavor, I taste delicious. So I'm gonna just glaze them, get a little brush, right over the top. It's gonna cook down on the inside of each little cupcake well. And you can do this once or twice, depending on how glazed you wanna go. One application is plenty until they're finished cooking, and then you can add one more before you serve. You can serve them with a dipping sauce. You can use the glaze as a dipping sauce. You can glaze them repeatedly throughout if you want like a nice, really mahogany kind of looking dark brown glaze. Totally up to you. They're gonna go back into the oven for probably seven or eight more minutes. And then we'll check the temperature and see how they look. 
It's party time. These look amazing and they smell so good. And they've got just all sorts of glazy, syrupy goodness going on in the bottom there. I'm gonna go straight out of the pan with my fancy toothpick right onto my little platter and just leave it there. Oh, that glaze wants it to stay, but it's going. That is the easiest way to impress everybody at a party. It's fresh, it's from scratch, it looks really good, and it smells amazing. And best of all, it tastes delicious. So, I'm Yankel, go make something great, have a party.